Welcome to Small Talks, where we have small talks about a big God. I'm Crystal Walker. Let's talk. Imagine two different salesmen trying to sell you a special drink. They claimed it could help you become sharper and more focused to increase your productivity in life. The first salesman tells you all of its nutritional facts, like it's natural, the berries they use in the drink comes from Tanzania, the drink has zero calories, it's carbonated, it comes in 20 different flavors, and he goes on and on telling you more and more awesome facts. That's salesman number one, we're gonna call him Mr. Facts. Now, salesman number two tells you to take a seat and he tells you a ton of stories of how the drink worked in his life. He tells you how he has been using this drink since he was in college. He talked about how in high school he was a mediocre student, but this drink helped him graduate at the top of his class in college. He goes on and on telling you multiple stories of how this drink worked in every phase of his life. We're going to call salesman number two, Mr. Story. Now, which salesman would be more convincing, Mr. Fat or Mr. Story. Most people would pick Mr. Story because there's something special and powerful about hearing how things worked in other people's lives. There's power in a story. Really, it is. Like some of you won't see a movie unless you heard stories from other people that it was good. Some of you guys won't try new restaurants unless you read stories and reviews on how other people experience that restaurant. Now look, we have something to offer the world that is much more powerful than this fictional drink. And his name is Jesus. And sometimes we can be like Mr. Fact and tell people these nutritional facts about Jesus. But how much more effective our witness could be if we could tell people how Jesus worked in our lives. There's so much power in your story. Psalm 107 verse 3 in the NIV version says, Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. And that word foe means enemy. It doesn't get any more clear than that. Let the redeem of the Lord tell their story. If you're a Christian, you've been redeemed from the penalty of sin. We could not pay for our sins and we were headed to be eternally separated from God. Hell was our final destination. We were headed down a godless path where we would have no hope, no peace, no joy. But Jesus stepped in when he purchased us by his blood. We've been redeemed. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. And the Bible says if we've been redeemed, we ought to say something. We ought to tell our story. And I want to help us today tell our story. Now, if you're going to tell your story, you first have to know your story. Are you aware of how God is working in your life? We see in Psalm 107, there are stories after stories about how God came through for them. They were in trouble and they were wondering and they were bound in slavery. But God stepped in and you'll see throughout that chapter how God rescued them and satisfied their thirst, brought them out of darkness and saved them from their distress. See, our lives are made up of a multitude of stories that display the hand of God in our lives. And to keep up with all the stories and all that God is doing in our lives, we almost have to take notes on what God is doing. We have to figure out a way to capture these stories. I want to encourage you to write them down, write them in a journal, record them some way in a voice memo. Uh, make a video, create some type of artwork to help you remember your story. Once you know your story, now you have to own your story. As you travel through life and God gives you more experiences and stories to tell, you're going to be tempted to edit your story or hide pieces of your story because they may reveal your weaknesses or shortcomings, or maybe it's just too painful to remember. Some of us literally choose not to remember pieces of our story. We block it out of our memory bank. And I want to suggest that God doesn't want you to ignore pieces of your story. He wants you to own your story. And yes, I know maybe you've been through some terrible things, but God still wants to use that piece of your story. You may have been persecuted, but the Bible says you were not forsaken. You might have been struck down, but you were not destroyed. See, the more we hide certain pieces of our story, the more we will muffle the redemptive power of Jesus in our lives. Editing your story may preserve your own reputation, 
but it does not highlight his. And that's what it's all about, y'all. See, when you tell your story, you are giving God credit for the work he's done in your life. It's like when you had to do a research paper in school. There were times when you may have taken direct statements or information from other books and sources. If you did not cite the source or give any credit to the author, you would have been in violation of what? Plagiarism, right? So I say to you, don't plagiarize your life. Don't go through life never giving credit to the author of your story. So know your story, capture what God is doing in your life, own your story, the good and even the bad, and give your story away because I believe God wants to use your story to change someone else's story. Let's pray. God, would you help us tell the story you've given us so that you can get the most glory out of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.